Hello everyone, this is architect Nimna and you're watching Home Insights. The topic under discussion for today's video is biophilic designing as obvious from the word biophilic is derived from the term biophilia which means your love for nature. So this term biophilic designing was basically popularized by one of the most famous American biologists edward o wilson in the 1980s so the point was what he observed was that the increasing rate of urbanization was leading to um, a lot chaotic situation concerning our environment so while this disconnection with your natural world was observed by edward wilson this is a scenario that we do come across nowadays as well question arises why is biophilic designing important for us uh, primarily it helps with our cognitive functionality it helps reduce stress levels it also helps us maintain a healthy lifestyle it also adds to the sustainability factor of designing all in all one should really be careful while they design stuff we being architects and designers really need to consider this term and the impact it has on our society <music> Talking about the scope and the extent of biophilic designing, it is not limited to the internal planning of your building or space specifically, but it also extends to the level of designing exteriors. So talking about exteriors or interiors, both of them can be treated with a biophilic approach separately. Digging deep into the topic, our biophilic design principles are majorly categorized into three broader disciplines. Uh, naming them nature of your space, nature in the space, and nature analogs. Elaborating a bit on nature in the space, this means direct presence of nature and often includes multi-sensory interactions. For example, these can be thermal, visual, haptic, olfactory, etc. Talking about nature of the space, this means mimicking or being inspired by spatial configurations in nature, replicating feelings that nature spaces give us for example sense of refuge mystery calmness etc lastly natural analogs this is indirect methods of reflecting nature use of naturally inspired patterns and shapes with non-natural materials or materials that have been altered extensively these three basic principles that i talked about these can be used individually or collectively given the fact that if you have a natural environment already you need to see what combination goes best for you and if you don't have a natural environment you definitely need to see what other combinations you can get along with <laughs> going to tell you a few examples of biophilic design you can surely google them out there is going to be a lot of content out there i will be discussing the last one in detail the rest you can surely uh, search out for yourselves so the first one being ku tech pua hospital in singapore the second being panyadin school in thailand third one is ruin studio in scotland fourth falling water by the great Frank Lloyd Wright in Pennsylvania and I'm pretty sure all the architects out there would have definitely heard about it or would have done case studies on this since I did a major case study on this back then in my architectural years. And lastly, the spheres in Seattle. Talking about um, the spheres, gigantic and beautiful building, it is Amazon's um, hybrid greenhouse and it also serves as a conservatory and a very vibrant and engaging office space. Here I would also like to add um, Amazon's vice president's words regarding the building. He says we wanted a space for employees to collaborate and innovate. We asked ourselves what is missing from the modern office. We discovered that missing element was a link to the nature. So finally, now we are talking about the inside about designing philosophy of the building. There is a green wall that goes up to 65 feet lining up a staircase that climbs nearly to the top of the 90 feet tall middle dome. Each level within the building provides different sitting arrangements. Sitting tucked away with little courtyards, something that is unfortunately lacking in the office environments otherwise. 
In total, there are 40,000 plants living within the building. Just geodesic architecture structure is made use of. There are glass walls with metal frames seeming more fluid. As far as the exterior is concerned, it looks more organic, something that reveals itself over time, more vine-like than structural steel itself. Allows workers to work in an environment that completely differs from generic working culture. It's not only a showpiece but a real workhouse which caters to optimum humidity and light levels. Coming to the conclusion, I think I pretty much um, made a point regarding biophilic designing, how it should be done. The examples that I quoted were just for your help in order for you to see how things can be implemented in real life, how do they look exactly, the buildings that already have been made. Um, since this topic is quite vast and this cannot be covered in a single video, we would love to have your comments and your feedback. Do let us know if you want us to discuss this in more detail. Anything that you want should be added to the video. Um, we would love that. Wrapping up today's session, I hope you guys had a good time watching the video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Also, to get updated with our future videos, press the bell icon for you to get notified. Um, I am signing out. Wait until the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.